Happy to have back with us here at ASCO 2013 is Dr. Elizabeth Mittendorf. She is Assistant Professor in the Department of Surgical Oncology, Division of Surgery at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. Thanks for being here again. My pleasure. How has your year been? It's been a great year. We've been uh, continuing to enroll patients onto our clinical trials, investigating different HER2 derived peptide vaccines, and continue to have very exciting results, some of which we're presenting at the meeting this year. Now, you're a principal investigator on a number of different studies, but today we're here to start, talk specifically about AE37. There's a number of presentations on it. How do you describe this right now? So AE37 is a peptide that's derived from the HER2 protein. And what that basically means is a small piece of the larger protein, but that small piece, when given as a simple shot under the patient's skin, is enough to stimulate the immune system to recognize the HER2 protein. And so the strategy for this vaccine is to give it to patients who've been rendered disease-free with our standard therapy, surgery, chemotherapy, radiation when required, in order to then prevent disease recurrence. So AE37, unlike some of the other vaccines we're working with, is an interesting vaccine in that it's targeting the CD4 positive T cells. And so what that means from an immunologist perspective is that this is stimulating a helper immune response. So this vaccine is basically setting the immune system up to just more broadly do its job. Now one thing that's important about AE37 is it's actually not just a HER2 derived peptide. It has a special uh, modification on the end which makes it even more robust and more effective. What is the response to the data being presented here? Yeah, so at this meeting last year, you may recall, we presented some very encouraging data from our first planned interim analysis, which demonstrated a 43% reduction in the relative risk of recurrence. Our vaccinated patients had a recurrence rate of about 10% compared to slightly over 18 in the controls. And so the trials continue to accrue quite well. And what we're presenting at this meeting is just additional data that looks one at safety and the vaccine continues to be very safe with very few greater than grade three toxicities. We see in about 5% of patients that they have what's referred to as a delayed urticarial reaction. And one of the posters this morning is discussed, uh, discussing that. And interestingly, the patients who have these urticarial reactions, it's almost a marker of a very robust immune response and there've been no recurrences in those patients. And then the other thing that we've been presenting uh, this week's meeting is data to look at the immune response. And so what we've shown is, the, again, that these patients do mount a immune response that recognizes the HER2 protein, that this response persists. And then the other poster this morning is showing that if we give them a booster inoculation, so meaning after they've gotten their six initial shots, we come back and give them another booster every six months. It helps to maintain that robust uh, response. So that's what we've been looking at this year. Um, having said that, we, for the AE37 trial, by mid-fall, we'll be presenting the uh, initial, or the first analysis, or first report of our primary efficacy analysis. So we've got a lot of exciting things coming up with AE37. Can you talk about the patient population being targeted? So that's a great question because I, I told you it's a HER2 derived peptide vaccine. So a lot of my clinical colleagues think that means the patient has to be HER2 positive. And when we talk about HER2 positive for purposes of giving a patient trastuzumab or now pertuzumab TDM1, um, it means that they have the highest level of expression. So we grade it as zero, one plus, two plus, three plus. And then the other way to look for HER2 is to look for amplification of the gene. These HER2 derived peptide vaccines actually benefit patients with any degree of HER2 expression. So the one plus, two plus, three plus. So all levels of HER2 expression have enrolled on the trial. And very interesting is that with this vaccine, as well as some of the other HER2 derived vaccines we're looking at, our data is suggesting that the most robust immune response is stimulated in the HER2 one plus, two plus patients. So going forward, it's likely that these vaccines may fit into that arena, which is still clearly an unmet medical need in that we don't have any targeted therapy for the low HER2 expressors. How does AE37 compare with other immunotherapies for breast cancer? So right now in breast cancer, there's actually in cancer in general, obviously from attending this meeting, you know that there's a significant interest in immunotherapy. Um, breast cancer largely is not thought to be an immunogenic tumor, and I think that's changing, and there's um, enthusiasm for trying some of these immunotherapeutic approaches. So well, we've discussed our program, which is largely looking at vaccines. I cannot give you any data comparing this vaccine to another because we've never looked at them head to head. They do have different mechanisms of action and so that might be something to do, a comparison, or alternatively, to put them together. Other 
forms of immunotherapy that are of interest in breast cancer include things like checkpoint blockade. So at this meeting, there's been a lot of data not in breast, but in other disease sites showing that these checkpoint blockade agents that basically take the breaks off the T cells and let them really do their job, we're starting to uh, put together trials to look at that in breast cancer. So there's a lot of exciting work going on and we're just glad that the vaccines are finding a, a niche there as part of it. Very good. We hope to talk to you again next year with further progress. And I have to tell you, you're such a pro. I love how you stick to the facts all the time. Well, good. Thank <laughs> Nicely you. Nicely done. Dr. Elizabeth Mittendorf talking about AE37 here at ASCO 2013.